Hello everyone. Decided to make a little lesson on Esperanto. I'm going to try to keep this very simple and it's not going to cover a lot. The intention is to follow it up with further lessons. If people like uh, the format of this lesson, the way I'm going about it, I'd appreciate some feedback. Subscribe, whatever you think will uh, encourage me to make more. And uh, let's get on with it. Esperanto Basics, simplified for English speakers. Uh, let's see. Scroll this down. In this lesson, italics will be used to show Esperanto as we replace or augment English words. Basically, what I'm going to do is um, ease Esperanto in uh, specifically for English speakers. This could be done with any other language by replacing words and allowing you to go ahead and uh, use the vocabulary that you already have. So first word is la. Instead of the, use the Esperanto word la. The cat becomes la cat. In Esperanto it would actually be la cato. But so that you can start practicing right away with friends or family, I'm going to teach you how to mix what you know in Esperanto with the vocabulary you already have. In this case, your English vocabulary. Esperanto supports the word order from many languages, including English. To do that without confusing people, parts of speech which are expected in different orders in such languages are instead marked as word endings, such as the O on the end of kato. Notice, uh, as I mentioned, la kato would actually be, or la cat would actually be la kato in Esperanto. If we wanted full Esperanto, kato ends in an o. That marks it as a noun. So the cat becomes la kato. Again, mixed with English. Likewise, the dog becomes la dago. In pure Esperanto, it would actually be la hundo. And the big cat becomes la biga cato. While the big dog becomes la biga dago. Really, it would be la grande hundo in full Esperanto. But in Spanish, that same sentence is el perro grande, at least for a male dog. It would be el perro grande for a male dog. La perra grande would be a female dog. Uh, but notice that grande came last in either case. In English, dog came last. In Spanish, the adjective comes after the noun. In Esperanto, you don't rely on the word order to tell nouns from adjectives. So, la granda hundo is the same thing as la hundo granda. Notice if I were to say la hunda grando, then I'm, then I'm actually changing things around. Hunda would be an adjective meaning basically dog-like, uh, having some quality of a dog. If I said la grando hunda, then what I'm really saying is um, the dog-like bigness. That could be a little confusing, but notice that it is possible to interpret such a thing. But for now, we're going to stick to English words just to not have to figure out how to translate words that you don't know. It's just one less thing to learn since you can speak in the order you know. So now you know enough to practice. Point at something and say La Wallo Bricka, La Caro Retta, La Mano Tala. 
take turns with a friend translating each other. Or if nobody will practice with you, practice alone. That way, when you learn enough, that way when you learn more, you, you don't forget what you've already learned. And uh, <clears throat> when you learn enough to start speaking in pure Esperanto, you'll already be fluent in the use of the parts that you've been practicing before having learned that much. So, that's the end of the first lesson of Esperanto Basics Simplified for English Speakers.